Back again with the practice squad, everybody. Welcome to the series. We are trying to turn this season around, but if we can't do it, we'll get on to the next one very soon. Last episode was the first time I've actually used the NFL draft in this series, trying to loosen the restrictions as to how we can add talent to this team. And we certainly have some players that I think have some upside, but they need time to potentially reach it. So I don't mind if we get through this season pretty quick and on to the next draft as we have a ton of picks and I'm excited to finally spend them. I do have to release Jason Barksdale. He's not actually eligible. He was projected to be drafted, which means that I shouldn't have selected him with our first pick in the last draft. But when it comes to the next one, I do think there are going to be some chances to get a lot better. I'm going to draft a receiver. That's why I'm getting so prepared here. And Keldon Keaton seems to be the best option. Really interested in his combine. Hope it's sub 4-5. He could end up being our very first pick. And so far, he might be the best overall player that we have scouted. Continuing to lose, we have a 42-24 finish here against Arizona, a team it feels like we play four times a year instead of two. They're always on the schedule. Four interceptions in this one for Pat Whitworth. We give up two rushing touchdowns to Kyler Murray, and it's just a bad day all around once again. Going to get some deals done here with some of the veteran players like Ashari Crosswell. I just got Presley Harvin signed to a four-year contract and Bryce Hall to a two-year. Right now, we have 11 picks in the upcoming draft, and it's been a little difficult finding 11 players that I think make the team better. There we go. Fourth round cornerback talent here. Thomas Thurston, 6'3", 190, with some press ability. I should probably be pretty thorough when it comes to the edge rushers because if we can just find one player who, for some reason, has like third round talent, that would make one of the biggest differences on this team. So that's probably where I'll spend like the rest of our season scouting here and maybe even wait a little bit until the combine when some of those combine grades are more of a, a hint as to which edge rushers could be really interesting but at the very least I think that you know Alex Simmons here at defensive tackle we have to get better at stopping the run hopefully he has good strength and I should scout even more defensive tackles it's been hard to find like draft board targets though I only have 12 at this point when I've scouted 42 players so far we finally snap an eight game losing streak for our second win of the year against Philadelphia we have Pat Whitworth throwing one touchdown but not a great passing day overall for the team and Nigel Jenkins gets 56 yards on the ground Carl Holiday 50 and 2 so really focusing on the run game here I do like seeing that I think it gives us a little bit of an edge in simulating at times and Pat Whitworth isn't looking for a huge contract, actually. I thought it might, just because he's a 70 and he plays a lot, but just a basic three-year deal will get this done. No problem there. We are able to win a couple weeks later again, getting number three against the Ravens. I don't know how we could ever beat this team, but we found a way. Whitworth throws two touchdowns. Jenkins, four yards a carry, 83 on the ground. Holiday scoring again, definitely racking up some touchdowns here in his rookie campaign. Love that. Now, morale is bad. We lose a lot, in case you weren't aware. So, Nigel Jenkins would be like an 85 overall if it weren't for that. So, at the start of next season, we have an 85 overall running back. Can we finally create an environment where these players don't have low morale? Here's how the season has gone, by the way. It is so similar to last season, but we have a few more games to go to see if he can end up getting close to a thousand yards. I wouldn't expect him to get there, but it is possible if he keeps up these 80 plus yard performances for sure. 
only a handful of touchdowns this year. He scored five, and that came in two games. Patrick Douglas, do we know the development yet? Five snaps. We'll know very soon then. 66 overall, Patrick Douglas. Nice tight end upgrade here, and 84 speed. Catching with a boost is up to 87. Should still be good when the boost is gone. How about Patrick Pickens here? A route runner upgrade, and we get medium catching and awareness. Not a ton there. So I think I've scouted close to all of the undrafted options here when it comes to edge rushers, and it is not a good undrafted edge rush class. We're not all the way done, but we're certainly getting there, waiting for somebody to surprise me. And Alonzo Brinkley is maybe one of the best options. At 320, he's more of a defensive tackle, but we'll take anybody that we can get here. Tyrone Carrington could be one of the better options here. From Pittsburgh, only 21 years old, be finesse moves. I did think by now I might come across a few players who have like third round talent and maybe they're still out there, but I'm not finding them. Patrick Douglas, let's go with possession here. I really hope to get some route running if possible. And a little bit there. All right. What's the dev? It is star. Definitely somebody we can look at developing going forward. Patrick Douglas. The first hidden dev player we've gotten on offense. And we have Carl Holiday, who has gotten a lot of playing time this year. Definitely getting some touchdowns here in his rookie season. And he's got 10 of them. Now, under 3 yards a carry, so that's not great. But it looks like as our power back, he is able to get some touchdowns at least. Which is good for the overall development. And then once he gets... A little bit higher overall, the yards should be there. Ooh, Jadarius Edwards. We found a fourth round talent again at wide receiver. Like, the best players we've found have been at wide receiver. So, we should have options here if we want to get younger and maybe a bit more dynamic. Sean Lindsay, Indiana State Safety. Hybrid archetype, man coverage ability, B plus hit power, and one of the better players I think I've scouted. Well, we didn't make the playoffs this year, or really a whole lot of progress either, going just 4-13, and, and taking a look at the stats for this year, I mean, around the bottom in every major category yet again. Now, I was able to draft this year, but... We're not drafting like first round talent, so we're not always getting that immediate impact. Hey, we got Aaron Bayless to succeed in his Deb Trade upgrade though in the last week, so that's a positive way to close the season. 20k XP for a starting safety. Let's go through these stats now, but I don't think it's going to be anything too different. Yardage wise, 44 73, that's around what we typically do and you know we passed the ball actually this is the worst ever in this series now that would be fine if we ran the ball well but it wasn't anything special we've ran the ball for more than this and passed for more in the same season 20.9 points per game that still puts us towards the bottom and is actually the best we've ever done Unfortunately, the run defense was horrible. I know we missed Marvin Wilson this year. I like to think that all of these defensive numbers would be different if he had stayed here instead of going to Denver. And we should probably see what he was able to do this year. Marvin Wilson didn't have a huge year with the Cowboys. He had two and a half sacks, which is pretty typical for him. But he's just a better player than most that we have. He had 10 tackles for a loss. He does give you something in the running game as far as defense goes. And we certainly missed that and need to replace it this year. 
So we're not going to see anything interesting here in the player stats either. Pat Whitworth, not his most exciting season. It was better than a year ago, but I'm kind of ready to throw this one away and get on to the next one. Nigel Jenkins, 3.7 yards a carry, 909 yards and five touchdowns. Carl Holiday had 12 touchdowns, which I don't know if that gets him like anywhere close to rookie of the year status, but probably like top three or five option there. Terrace Marshall leading receiver for the second time in this series with 709 yards, but obviously I simmed every game, so we have this long of 25 bug, so it's hard to really do much in the receiving game until that is fixed. And then defensively, Five and a half sacks for James Lynch. That is a lot better than we're used to. Markel Ayers had three after a pretty good preseason. And then Javen White, he always puts up stats. So does Ulysses Gilbert. All right, Aaron Bayless got that star dev boost right at the end of the year. And safety was one of those positions I was thinking about, but maybe now a little bit less with these upgrades that are all going to go into his zone coverage because we allowed 519 points this year and have to work on that. We had one of the worst pass defenses we ever had. All right, we do have some changes here. So Javen White was a superstar, lost it as he regressed and got older, but he keeps putting up numbers. So he's got star dev once again. That's pretty awesome. We have Jordan Compton here, who also just got star development. This is brand new. And Compton is an edge rusher. We need some success there. I'm not sure exactly what got him to star, but I'm glad he got it. How about a dominant win here for the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? 55-21. to That's an MVP for Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. And we're moving on. All right, we are letting a few players go. We should have a fair amount of turnover this year as Porter Gustin's going to go, Alani Allen. I will probably sign Eric Williams. Most of these players here that are under like 28, I've wanted to keep signed, but there are some veterans that we're going to move on from and try to change up the starting lineup a little bit, uh, get something fresh for this series. So we could always look for an offensive lineman if there is a good enough option. We have all low 70s right now, plus Will St. Clair at 77. So we might look there. I think that I'd like to get some new receivers here because we've had the same ones for so long and they're not going to develop too much longer. So I need to draft at least one receiver and definitely make sure that they play. I always identify these players that I think could be really interesting but if they're not getting on the field it's hard for them to really develop much wait a minute Patrick Douglas lost star dev that's what I'm talking about I didn't play him enough so he lost it just like that Javen White also just lost his star development so you got to make sure these players continue to produce Linebacker, definitely going to be a target this year. I know that Gilbert and Javen White are really productive, but that might be a reason why we're allowing so many points. Their ratings have gone way down. Defense in general, like front seven and playmaker on offense is kind of the priority this year. So now at this stage, we are trying to find the most impressive combines that we can. Okay, two A minuses. That's what I'm talking about right there. Derek Mitchell, 45440, late second round talent. He would be the best player available and definitely a day one starter at linebacker. 6'3, 253, runs really well. And obviously, his top three is going to make him a pretty good run defender. We're on to the draft once again, everybody, and I pretty much shared everybody that I felt was really interesting in this class. We will trade down here just to keep getting more picks in future classes, and maybe we'll get lucky and one of those ends up being like a really solid draft with some more options. Like this uh, three and a five, 
Definitely not bad from Pittsburgh. Get that for the future. We already have nine picks for next season. And we barely fell down the board either. Who'd they move up for? An 80 overall corner. That is a good use of a trade by the CPU. All right, I like this one here. Baltimore is giving us two picks in the future. Their first and their third. This is a trade that I haven't really seen uh, the CPU do too much, but trading their future first round pick so they can move up from late in this current first round. That's pretty cool. Now, I've seen them draft quarterbacks here in franchise lately. They go with a defensive end, though. All right, I think I'm making our first pick of the day here. And we have a few options I'm really excited about. And then we should have some picks to maybe guess on some players. There are a few I didn't scout, and maybe we'll draft some of them. But if we look at the draft board here, I have 24 targets, which is a lot less than you would have assumed probably. A second round talent, a few fours, but a lot of sixes and seventh round options. So we'll start it off here with Derek Mitchell, Oklahoma State linebacker, excited about him. 71 overall. So that right there will make him one of the highest overall linebackers we already have on the team. So late two is 71 with good speed. And yeah, low coverage, but it's not like unfixable. And the way our linebackers produce, he could get to star dev, he could get a breakout scenario, 20,000 experience later. There is a route to him being a complete linebacker. Alright, with this next one then, our second first round pick of the day is going to end up being, I would say, Keldon Keaton. Mid-fourth talent. Now he ran a 4-5, so we'll see... If I really want him to be a deep threat or just a big slot. Keldon Keaton, 68 overall. Deep threat archetype, 88 speed. That short route running is on the lower end. So his ratings are more set up to be a deep threat in the short term. You could obviously change that up a little bit. 72 release, 78 deep route running. I feel like I'd still develop him as a slot. With our next pick, we are going to select Alex Simmons here from Vanderbilt, a run stopper whose bench press came in a little bit lower than I would like, but I think he's the best that we scouted. 88 strength is actually not bad. Now 68 shed, 68 power moves, so you can focus on what you want him to be better at early on, probably a little bit of both. But right away, we've already upgraded the run defense, I'd say. Continuing to take the best players available, I think it's time for Jadarius Edwards, who ran a 4-4-4. So I think we'd probably keep him as a deep threat. Edwards, 67 overall normal dev. 90 speed, 73 deep route running, definitely just keep him as a deep threat. Hoping we can find some hidden development before this is done, though. I think now I definitely want to draft an edge rusher. We have Alonzo Brinkley, Tyrone Carrington. I scouted so many edge rushers, but only found a couple to put on the draft board here. So we'll start it out with Tyrone Carrington. The combine was decent for 740, 21 years old, B finesse moves, normal dev once again, 65 speed rusher, 80 speed, 75 finesse moves. Continuing on here, we will select Sean Lindsay. We're going to a safety this time. Really good combine, man coverage, six foot one. So is he a safety? Is he a corner? Where does he fit best? Sean Lindsay, 87 speed, probably not corner then. 66 zone, 80 hit power, 70 man coverage, 70 catching as well. We'll draft a corner now with great size, great speed. Thomas Thurston from Northwestern, a 67 overall. 89 speed now and some press ability on the outside. I love that skill set, of course. 
With this next pick, really good combine here at center. It is Jake Cutler. Welcome, Northern Illinois. 64 overall. Jake has 88 strength, 74 run block, 67 pass block. So a new backup lineman to develop. I'm going to take another receiver here. I really just want to keep drafting them until I can get some different skill sets. And what I like here about Kevin Bradfield, he's a deep threat whose best route running looks to be short route running. So I'm kind of intrigued by that. Maybe his deep threat or his deep route running and short are like the same. And that's exactly what happens here. So Bradfield, he's got... A really interesting set of skills here to start his career with because release is already good and then short and deep route running being where they are you can pick one right off the bat now catching the football doesn't seem to be his strong suit and if you're going to be a slot receiver catching the ball you got to be able to handle catches in traffic of course so I'd probably develop him as a deep receiver especially at 6'3 all right, now we're going to take Alonzo Brinkley, and he's one of those players that might be a better fit at a different position and have a higher overall at D-tackle. Brinkley's a 65 overall, 6'4", 319, 78 speed, only 79 strength though. That is really, really low strength. So his skill set right off the bat is really similar to like when James Lynch was a rookie. And with our last selection here, we're going to the running back position. We have two options. One has undrafted talent. It's weird, though, because his top three is so good. He ran a good 40. He had a great bench. His acceleration and agility are going to be really bad. Bobby Andrews, though, still seems kind of intriguing. Trevor George, not as fast, not as strong but just a better running back right away. I'm taking Bobby Andrews because there are so many, like it's a boomer bust skill set with him. I'm here for the boom. Bobby, boom Andrews, 90 speed, 90 acceleration actually isn't terrible. 83 vision, 74 break tackle, 67 receiving. Very injury prone, unfortunately. No traits either besides uh, covering the football. So did we draft any difference makers here? Well, I think Derek Mitchell is definitely going to have a chance. He's going to start right away immediately. I want to hopefully get these receivers some snaps early on. I want Alex Simmons to play. And we'll see where everybody else fits in. Once we get into the regular season, I'll definitely be mixing up the receivers a bit, but we still have Terrace Marshall. I want Kelvin Session to play, but we're definitely getting starts and snaps right away for Keldon Keaton. I think that we're going to have him be the slot receiver, try to develop as much as possible as a rookie and see where that can take him. And then I also want to make sure we get Kevin Bradfield some playing time as well. I'm intrigued with his skill set on day one. So Tyler Johnson's probably going to be the odd man out here as far as the veteran receivers go. And then on defense, JC Mays playing a lot. And then Derek Mitchell, like I said before. These two are also going to be the sub linebackers trying to develop into that role. They're not great right now, but they should be better after the season's over, of course. JC Mays, really a pure cover player, so I could consider also taking him off the field unless it's those third down snaps, which might be for the best. Nice preseason here for the quarterback. So Pat Whitworth, good completion percentage, two touchdowns. And then Quincy Christie, who I think is the new number two. I am intrigued with him. He's only a couple points behind any of our quarterbacks and should be the backup quarterback going forward. 88 throw power, 82 short accuracy, 85 speed. So Cole McDonald probably not making the team now. Rushing, Carl Holiday, 3.8 a carry. Definitely want to see that average come up this year, and he should still get a lot of opportunities 
Kevin Bradfield making the most of his preseason snaps here. Keldon Keaton, six catches. To the defense where Derek Mitchell and JC Mays get a lot of tackles. Mays also a sack plus a pick. Four interceptions in preseason play. And we tend to get good pass rush in these games as well. It's just doing it against the starters that's the problem. So definitely some more surprising cuts, I suppose you could say. Like Cole McDonald is going to be released. We have Brock McGowan going to the practice squad. Tyler Johnson, we are going to release him. Start to get younger at wide receiver. Unfortunately, Isaiah Johnson, now at 32 years old, is not going to make the team. And Jake Cutler is going to make it to the practice squad as we get down to 53. And year 8 is set to get underway. Looking for standouts here on practice squads to make the team. I had some interest here in Carl Weeks, but I just drafted three receivers, so not going to make any more moves here, but Weeks is pretty intriguing. If I could find somebody along the defensive line, that would be incredible, but we just haven't had that opportunity yet. Unless I get Daniel Hunley. 70 overall, entering year two? I'm sure we can make room for him. We'll have to release Sammy Cooks to make room. And here is a look at the roster now and the progress we've made. Top player, Nigel Jenkins at 24 years old. Bryce Hall at 30. Top cornerback and defensive player. And we definitely need to make sure we can find some more young breakout players this year or we're just going to keep going backwards or not making progress at all. But a 75 overall defense here on week one. We open it against the Atlanta Falcons. Can year eight bring some change to this team we've been waiting for? All right, that's pretty dominant right there for the practice squad. Come on now, 31-10. We won in week one a year ago to get my hopes up a little bit, and now we're doing it all over again. We seem to have run the ball fairly well, 71 yards for Jenkins, Whitworth doing a pretty good job as well, Holiday scores as he tends to do. 31-10, I mean that's got to be one of the most lopsided wins we've had in this entire series. So what's going to follow that up? We get the classic close loss so this has been pretty typical for us we show a little bit of promise and then our losses aren't too bad and you're like yeah we'll definitely win some games soon and then we lose eight straight and it just doesn't happen too many rushing yards and i'm still struggling to find the right players to rebuild the run defense we got lucky with marvin wilson and I think that we're really missing him right now. Nice game here for Jordan Compton. Hopefully this draft class gives us more opportunities. That last one felt so weak. All right, it's a brand new class. And I think I want to go right back to D-Tackle because I was expecting to have a chance to maybe get a second or third round talent and it didn't work out that way. We'll start out here by scouting the top ratings and seeing if anything stands out there. B plus power moves, all right. But undrafted talent for Daryl Bowman. Rakeem Bethel is undrafted talent. It's certainly not uh, making it easy to build this team, but it is nice having this option. All right, Alex Simmons has earned his first upgrade. I have to play some of these rookies if I want them to reach their potential. We played Pat Whitworth. We have to play players like Alex Simmons. He's got the strength. The strength boost is also very useful. And then 70 block shed, 70 power moves. We can make him a cornerstone defensive player. Kevin Bradfield is going to be specialized to get off the line and win down the field. When we're watching games again, I want to see him making plays deep. These close losses aren't fun anymore. We have a 27-26 game here against Miami to go to 1-3 on the season. We gotta start winning games. 
which means we have to find a way for these to go our way and we're not doing it yet somehow we won that first game in blowout fashion but we can't count on winning like that very often you have to win some close games 15 tackles here for Derek Mitchell he is really racking up the stats already I want to know exactly how James Lynch got an interception too here is Derek Mitchell, inside linebacker and maybe the future star of this Seattle defense. And we are making sure he plays a lot. Let's make him the captain of the defense as well. There's a long history of great linebackers across my two channels. And here's what he's been able to do so far. A season high, 15 tackles against Miami. 35 on the season, a half sack. All right, Keldon Keaton now. Let's see what he's been doing. He was another draft pick I was excited about this year. I like the short route running there. That takes it up to a 70. Keldon Keaton. We have him at just one catch, so I am not getting him on the field enough. Let's change that. All right, now we lose by 14 to the 0-4 Giants. So maybe this isn't the season either. Whitworth, two touchdowns. We're still not running the ball great, but the average is actually pretty decent there. Keldon Keaton, four for 56. Have him as the slot receiver again. Sessions getting the ball too. But there might be even more backups playing if we don't start winning some games here. I have never seen this. This is the tandem breakout scenario. Bryce Hall plays at such a high level and always leads by example. Do you think I can have that kind of impact? Ratings boost or interception bonus goal? I want the rating boost here for Antoine Peck. I want the sure thing here. 2,500 experience going to Bryce Hall for inspiring a teammate. Become the example. Get two plus combined INTs and pass breakups with Antoine Peck against the Panthers to inspire the entire defense. Wow. And he gets a boost for the next game. I do think next episode that could be a really fun game to get into, even though this season is kind of lost again. At least see that whole scenario play out, see what happens with it, and then go from there. But we have added the draft now. I've done two of them. And we have not seen a big boost yet. So Pat Whitworth right now, eight touchdowns, four interceptions. Running game, you know, right around where it has been. Nothing too spectacular. And there isn't a lot of new to talk about with the offense. I am excited about Derek Mitchell. I think that with his production, he should have a chance to maybe win rookie of the year or get a boost. And then you have some pass rush here that is showing to be maybe a little bit better than what we've had in the past. Some success with Ben Carmen, James Lynch, Jordan Compton, Kane Dodge. So that's solid. Aaron Bayless has a couple of interceptions. He got the big boost today and is about to get an upgrade here pretty soon. But here is where we are. The offensive line has been developing pretty well this year. You have Will St. Clair with his boost reaching 79, close to 80 overall right now. And then the interior is getting a bit stronger as well. And that might help Jenkins get to four yards and above per carry pretty soon. I think that defensively now, I just want to see how fast some of these players can get upgrades. We're getting more pass rush, which is nice. Alex Simmons, 92 strength right now, up to 72 power moves, but does not yet have that first career sack. Is he really playing? See, it keeps messing with the depth chart like when players get hurt and come back, so I have to fix that a bunch. Ah, forget waiting until next episode. I'm sure we can stuff it into this one. Well, let's see how this goes. Mac Messina is the new quarterback here with the Panthers. I know he was rookie of the year whenever he was drafted. He's been in this league for a while, and the Panthers are one of the toughest teams in the league. So it's not a convenient team to have this scenario up against. But let's get it going anyway. 
and we are mixing up our receivers a lot more now. We are going to see Kelvin Session as the number one. And he is on the bottom of the screen as Whitworth is sacked. Kevin Bradfield is number 80. He's also playing. And then Keldon Keaton, our draft pick this year. He is going to be in the slot. On the outside, we have Hunter Bryant for a gain of five. And now third down. Whitworth still has that scrambler archetype. And we're still in that Baltimore Ravens offense. And it's third down and 13. There's a lot of pressure. Pass caught. That one is caught by Bradfield. And he's just shy of a first down. So we need some plays today for Antoine Peck, and he wears number 35. He is the number two corner on this team. And here is Messina underneath. It is a catch and a first down, and there is still Christian McCaffrey. Messina on second down. Out of the pocket now. Across the field, and the catch is made. Come on now. Hey, they still have Tommy Tremble. Messina on second down, had some pressure to deal with, but what's McCaffrey doing down there? Wide open. It's a Panther touchdown, way too easy. Check out this route by McCaffrey. It's designed to get open here deep. It's such a late developing route, you never expect to have a chance to even throw it. But of course, you can get away with it against our defense. How is Antoine Peck supposed to get these interceptions and pass breakups if we don't stay competitive? We have to score. Nice run. It's third and seven now for Seattle. It's a catch and a first down. Pretty good speed on display there up to the 45. And there is the rookie, Keldon Keaton. Only 88 speed, but looked pretty fast on that quick catch and run. Let's see if we can get some points on this drive. It is a run. Jenkins right side taken down short gain. Pat Whitworth on second down has to get out of there. He's going to run with it. First down and sliding in Panther territory. Whitworth throws it quick. There's a catch again. And some running room. What a block. And there goes Bryant inside the five. It's a 43-yard touchdown. A key block there thrown by the deep threat, Kelvin Session. And it's a nice touchdown answer here for Seattle. There it is again, man-to-man -man against Jeremy Chin. And an outstanding block, like I mentioned, by Session. All right, so I wanted to sim their next possession quick. Antoine Peck got a pass breakup on third and nine. That means he only needs one more. And there's the goal on screen too. I love that. Two plus interceptions and deflections. One more. He's got three and change quarters to get it. It's the full house pistol, or as I called it back in the Gophers franchise or Dynasty, the diamond pistol set. Oh, he bit badly on the fake. Arietta outside, first down. That was weird because that defender had a clear path to sack Whitworth, but he was so locked into his assignment there as a cover man that uh, he ended up not making the play. Once again, this team has a long way to go, but they are on the edge of field goal range. Extra pressure on the way. It'll get there, and down goes Whitworth. He's drilled. And it looks like Hunter Bryant's day is now done. That means Patrick Douglas is playing the rest of this one. We move ahead where Carolina leads this game 14-7. Waiting on Antoine Peck to make a play. There's McCaffrey to the outside. Gets a block and outruns the defense up to the 38-yard line. All right, got him back to pass now. And Messina's going down. He is sacked by James Lynch. That's got to be four now on the season. Third and 11. 
Mac Messina pressured in, dumps it out to McCaffrey. We'll get the stop this time. They don't test Antoine Peck. 11 point game here in the second half. Carolina football and McCaffrey continuing to run well. And if we can't slow them down, we're not giving them a good reason to have to throw it. McCaffrey out wide on first down. They will throw, and Messina wants to go downfield. There's coverage there, and it's incomplete. That was not directed at Antoine Peck. Second and 10, they will throw it again over the middle at the 25. From the empty set, there's pressure again, and we get to Mac Messina with Jordan Compton. Nice to see the pass rush make some key plays here. That's pretty cool. We have to keep this game close. Out of the shotgun, Pat Whitworth on first and 10. It's a quick throw here, but why was there no zip on that pass? He just kind of floated it in there. Can't afford to noodle arm those ones. And then we're stuck on third and long already. Seven rushes, four yards. I can't stand playing this team. They just get too good. They have Brian Burns, DJ Moore, Jeremy Chin, Tommy Tremble. These guys just stay around forever. This one's off the mark, and he would have had an open receiver too. I feel like we really need to get this goal taken care of soon, or Carolina's not going to be throwing very aggressively. That one is thrown in the direction of Peck, but it's caught by DJ Moore. Here's Mac Messina, now out to his right, and caught again for the first down up to the 30-yard line. Messina getting into the zone here for second down as heavy pressure is sent, and that leads to a Tommy Tremble first down. Another quick pass, and DJ Moore breaks a tackle, and that is another Carolina score as they go up by three possessions. Well, we're down 21 here in the fourth quarter. It is not looking good for the team or this goal for Antoine Peck as Whitworth somehow slings it downfield off the mark. On second down... Here's the deep ball now. Single coverage and broken up for the rookie Bradfield. Third and ten. Maybe try that one more time. This one's deep and caught inside the 15. Down to the 10-yard line. And there is Patrick Douglas. Trying to make this interesting now. A little split backfield, and the keeper maybe should have handed that one off to Jenkins, who likely wouldn't have met a defender until the goal line. Third and goal now from way too far out, and this is intercepted at the goal line, intended for Jenkins, and this is a pretty good return across the 40. He's still pulling away. Inside the 20, and this one's going to be a touchdown for Carolina. This one's over. And by the way, that is Jamal Adams. As we wrap this one up, I just want to see Quincy Christie take a few snaps now at quarterback. He is the new backup, and he gets out of there in a hurry and throws it away. I will change his number from number 12. That is retired by Seattle. Third down and 10. Let's see Christie make a play here. Oh, he won't get the chance. A very long way to go on this one. Christie with eight in coverage has time to throw. But is anybody worth throwing it to? He'll extend. Fires it deep. Cut wide open inside the 30-yard line. There's the big connection. We're down to the 24. Still two timeouts remaining. And on first and 10, dumped off. Jenkins to the marker. Call a timeout. Quincy Christie looking for a touchdown pass. Oh my. Not so sure what he was going for there, but on second and 10, he gets sacked again. Brian Burns. 
And it's third and 19. Difficulty steps it up here. Basically got to score a touchdown. And Christie will try to do just that, but it's broken up in fourth down. Who's going to make the play now? Last one here to the end zone. It's picked again. Don't even tell me he's scoring. Thank you. That's enough for one day. Well, it doesn't seem to be getting any easier for Seattle, unfortunately. I know that we've added the draft to the equation now, and we've only done two drafts. But it just feels like something's missing, like I'm not doing a good enough job managing the team or something. I was ready to go coming into the game, but wasn't able to find the football or make the plays I was hoping to. Sometimes it works out that way, but don't let it discourage you from coming into every week feeling like you're going to make an impact. So I guess we did not get anything from that. I suppose then we'll be preparing for our next draft and here is what I've been able to find so far. Just some 7th and 6th round talents and then some 5th round linebacker talents. Jamal Cleveland and Antoine Fox are both late 5th rounders so haven't found anybody that is super exciting yet. That is going to do it for episode 20 here with the Practice Squad Seahawks. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and let me know down below if you have any ideas as to how we can get this team to take that next step. I imagine we're drafting next episode and we hope that that can lead to something positive for this team. Have a great day everybody and I'll see you all in the next one.